Hi, everyone. Welcome to our weekly discussion series that is hosted by the Chaldean Cultural Center in collaboration with U of M Detroit Center, Unique Voices in Films, and CMN TV. Today, I have a Chaldean American guest who is a chef. She is an engineer. She is, um, she makes us, she's an author. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when you watch, and she's a TV host, which she has a lot of videos about her recipes, which when you watch her videos, you get, you know, you, you wish that you can know how to cook all of that. Welcome, Samira. It's so good to have you. Um, thank, you. thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, I got to say, when I first started working at the Chaldean Cultural Center, so the way my, my desk was, your cookbooks were right next to me. And I'm thinking, I got to like, take these home, I got to purchase these and I have to make sure that I follow it step by step. And I haven't yet perfected that, but I did get to see some of your wonderful videos and I learned so much from you. And I'll tell you one particular one that I really liked. But before we get into all of that and how you got into this profession, I'd like to learn a little bit uh, and for our audience to learn a little bit about yourself. You were born in Iraq, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. And is, and is that when your love for cooking started? Yeah, I actually started, I was born in Baghdad, Iraq and graduated college engineering. And then we left, we left in 1979. And, uh, but since I was very young, I was the oldest one in like my household uh, out of all my brothers and sisters. And uh, my mom, of course, you know, back home, they don't let you go in the kitchen and touch anything, you know. Uh, especially when you are that young, I was like maybe 10, 11 years old. I always wanted, you know, to be in the kitchen and help my mom to make, you know, some recipes. Uh, so, you know, but, you know, I took advantage of back home, you know, everyone, especially summertime, they take a nap, you know, it's too hot. It's called siesta time, you know, but I was the only one out of the whole household who will not nap, you know, because I just couldn't until this day I can't nap. So. So, you know, I go in the kitchen and, you know, back home, like you have pantry full of ingredients and freezer full of chicken and beef and everything. This is how they stack up, you know, back there. And so I take some, you know, few ingredients and I make something and then everyone, uh, like it's, uh, it's tradition, you know, like when they wake up, they need to have some chai with, you know, like some, some cookie or some, you know, just like a little thing with the chai, you know, that's like everyone does that. So I'll make something and turn not to be good. I serve it and I, you know, put the table, put napkins and teacups and everything. And if it doesn't turn out to be good, everything goes in the garbage, wash the dishes. It's like, I didn't do anything. So, you know, if it was a failure recipe, you know? So, and this is how, you know, I just like enjoyed it so much. And, you know, this just like stayed with me and, um, you know, like, uh, always, you know, people will ask for recipes from me. And then I said, why don't I put this in a cookbook? So we'll make it easy for people to have. So first of all, I started my first cookbook in the Arabic language because we had so many newcomers here that they had hard time even reading English. And, and they want, they already know how to cook our food. You know, there is the maraqa, the dolma, the kubbaham, all this food. They already know how to cook that, but they were raising kids here. So they wanted to like, you know, instead of going to a restaurant and buying something like chicken nuggets or pizza or, or pasta or different kind of salads that, you know, it's a new that we all, you know, like adopted to in this country. So I wrote all that in Arabic. It was all like international actually or food that everyone eats here if they are not eating at home. Uh, so, and it was really a big success. And I only have from like four or 5,000 copies, I only have like um, about 12 of them that I saved. I'm not even selling those because I want to keep them. So then, you know, like a lot of the moms, they said, okay, we, you know, like our girls are getting married, our sons are getting married and their wives. So they bother us with recipes and we don't know how to give recipes, you know. So why don't you just write one like our food? So I wrote the treasured Middle Eastern cookbook. Uh, of course, all our food. Is is by the way, it's a big hit by us. If you guys are interested, um, you know, you yeah. can get our books by um, at Amazon, but we. Oh, yeah, Amazon, yeah. Yeah, too. Yeah, we recently ran out. We had to order more. 
because <laughs> everybody, and by the way, not just um, people of Middle Eastern background, we had a Jewish uh, group that came. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I noticed from, you know, from Amazon orders, like I sold over 10,000 copies and from Amazon, you know, like I, I noticed, you know, the names and like, you know, it's going to Alabama, Utah, uh, North Carolina. I said, and like they all have American names. I said, really? I mean, Utah, who would, who would know about Chaldean or Middle Eastern food, you know? But our food, honestly, it's the best, you know? It's, it's very healthy. It's like so fresh. We use fresh ingredients, you know? So people who, uh, you know, like try our food, they keep, you know, going to the same place to buy more or to go and eat, you know, dine in in restaurants or, you know, a lot of, you know, people that I work with, they really make our recipes and they love it. So, you know, anytime I have leftover, I take it. I work as a substitute teacher for West Bloomfield High School and anything, you know, I have any extra food, I take it there and teachers just fight over it, you know, because they love our food. Well, so. and this is, um, so the question is, um, you know, I watch some of your videos and our foods, I mean, I, I do cook, of course, Iraqi and Chaldean food, but I, mm -hmm. I'm as elaborate as you, I have to admit. <laughs> advanced to that degree and most oh, of I'm sure, I'm sure i'm sure everyone is good everyone yeah. is good. i have that goal though and i have uh, lovely sisters that cook great food so they have to come and help me but um it's great that you have it in a recipe so i don't have you know we don't mm -hmm. each other all the time. um but uh, you know one of the things the lifestyle here is so different uh yeah. I, I think i saw one time in your interview where you said in Iraq, um, and, and I think it's the case in the most Middle Eastern countries still, where the women are mostly at home cooking. Um, and it, it takes a lot of time and the preparation and then the cooking and then the cleaning and, you know, it's a whole process and it's a wonderful, very healthy process. But how um, do you do that given that, you know, you work and then that, and you have kids, I'm sure you have. Yeah. Grandkids, and grandkids. And grandkids. Wow, see, so, well, grandkids. Yeah, well, uh, I'm really, you know, I'm. I am impressed by the women. Um, so yes, I cook and and everything else. Like my sisters are older than me, but um, they have, like I said, the more elaborate where they do things from scratch. Yeah. Um, so uh, and it's very impressive because it does take up a lot of time. And how does one or let's just you know maybe see how you do it. How do you juggle that? and keep a healthy kitchen and your traditional cultural foods while you're juggling all these other things. And even mm -hmm. women that don't work. In the United States, we're, we're very fast paced. There's a lot of things to do. If you have kids, you're like running around, not right now with the pandemic, but you know, taking them to different places. How, how did you handle all of that? And what advice would you give to other women? Uh, you know, very important thing, you know, before you even start cooking, you read you really need to have, you know, like all the ingredients ready for you. You know, you can't really run out, you know, in the middle of uh, of cooking. Oh, I forgot to do this. Oh, I forgot. Oh, did I lose you? Uh, I yeah, can, well, I can oh. hear you. I just need, yeah, if you can refresh your screen. Sure, sure. I'm going to do that. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know why is this happening. Okay. Mm. It's not uh, letting me. Okay, start the page here. There. Okay. All right. Sorry. Uh, so you really have, you know, you need to to have all your ingredients ready, making sure, you know, like what you're gonna make. And, you know, a good thing to do is like you wanna be prepared, like you know, for the whole week. What are you going to be making? I know, you know, more most of people they don't want to cook every single day, but sometimes, you know, you can prep some stuff that you could use for three or four days. You can make different things out of the same, you know, like let's say uh, you have a chicken ready, so you can the first day you have roasted chicken, uh, you can make some uh, red rice, some burger with some salad, and that will be a good meal. And then, you know, you could instead, I never roast one chicken. I always roast at least two or three of them because you know it takes the same 
uh, time in the oven to be roasting and same same preparation you get all your spices out you get all the stuff that you need out you need to um, marinate it you need to have it ready you need to put it in a roasting pan so instead of roasting just one it will take maybe another five or ten minutes extra you can roast two or three of them and then use them for different recipes you know like the first day you may you put that in the instructions how what that if you did three at the same time like do you yeah. have that in yeah. your and what do you do after that? So if you do three chickens, so let's let's say you you know, like you have one the first day you roasted the chicken, you can eat one chicken. Let's say it depends on how you know how big is your family. Of course, if my when my kids were home, now they all like you know out, like they all married and moved out. But when they were home, probably two chicken would be you know just ideal for my family. But like you know, if you just use one chicken, let's say you made some burger, some salad, uh, red rice, yellow rice, whatever you're gonna make with it, and then you still have two more. So the other one, two more the next day, you know, like I shred some chicken and I made like uh, let's say um, uh, chicken. Um, uh, maybe quesadillas are up. Uh, so you already have the chicken roasted so you just shred it and you have uh, some you know like the rest of the ingredients you want to make sure you have them ready so that's why you really have to be prepared what are you going to be making that week so when you go shopping you only make one stop and you get all your ingredients and then uh, maybe the, the other chicken you can cut it cut it out into pieces uh, take the skin out and you, you can make maybe uh, curry with it you know like chicken curry with it you know that that will be it's already cooked and everything and shouldn't take that long and that even saves you time because if your meat is cooked you know everything else is really not going to take that long and even when i'm making let's let's say from um from stew meat i never just like make one portion you know i buy like uh, a whole like maybe four or four, five pounds and then i sear it i cook the whole thing and then divide it into the black bags uh, with some, of course, some uh, beef stock in it, and then it will be ready. It goes in the in the freezer, and then if I want to make arzamarqa, it will take about the same time that will take for the rice to cook. The marqa will be cooked. So you know, these are like wow. good. Stuff. I mean, th these were so you do put into consideration the lifestyle that we're currently living. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking only for because. Like you said, everyone is busy here and most yeah. of the month, sometimes they work or they are on a run with their kids, you know. So I think that's, that's, that's really a good idea. And, you know, you save a lot of time, actually, even if you are not working, you know, I mean, why not? You could use your time to do something else. Well, this seems like this is the engineering side of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is why this is perfect where you quote that, you know, um, you, you say that they actually engineering and cooking mirror. Each. I do. Oh yeah, my like kitchen that, is my lab. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna be the one that wanna qu to quote you, you know, but you, can you share that? Because right now, just what you just said, you help yeah. like change my perspective on yeah. how to prepare the cooking. And I think yeah. my husband and my children will probably be a lot happier because I'll cook more often because you just simplified it in a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, honestly, I mean, there are so many steps you can take that you will, it will make you love to cook. You know, I mean, like, it's, you you know, when it's too complicated for you, anything, not only cooking, you will not enjoy it and you will just stop after one week of cooking, you know. But like when it's all organized for you, organization is a key for, I think, anything you do in your life, you know. And this is how I look at it. You know, I'm like, I organize everything. I'm like, like way, way, you know, crazy about organization and everything, but it helps a lot though. I mean, it, you know, makes my life a lot easier and it makes everything that I do a lot easier. So, I mean, you know, and I use, you know, like, like you mentioned, I use my engineering in cooking, you know, because uh, I mean, even when I wrote my cookbooks, you know, like when I, like, like when I open out the dough, I always tell them, divide it, open it into 12 by eight, and you cut that into eight portions. Each one is like three inches. So, I mean, that's like using math in your, you know, so it's just like very important. I mean, you know, like to be organized and to be precise every single time and use, once you like a recipe, use it all the time, you know, don't change anything. You know, like some people said, oh, it didn't turn out to be very good as last time. Uh, I think I added another tablespoon of flour or I added less salt or I added less, uh, let's say, you know, like uh, spices, you know. So you, if you like a recipe, just 
keep doing the same one. Do not change it, you know. So I think that's that's another thing that will keep you or make you cook all the time. And, you know, like it's 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 good motivation, I think. Well, okay, so let's go back to, um, you know, as an author myself, I'm, I've mm -hmm. never done a book, but I know that there's a lot of work that goes into creating a book, regardless mm -hmm. whether, you know, how you're writing it. So I've never done a cookbook, but now mm -hmm. what you're saying, I'm curious about how that process was for you. Because like you just said, there's, uh, you know, all this information, these details that you have to incorporate, and you know that people are going to be like using these measurements. Mm -hmm. and you want to be you know so accurate to help them have the best outcome and then you have to put images in it and the whole process so can you share your experience in writing the books was that difficult did you have to get help if somebody is interested in doing something similar regardless of you know what the recipes might be you know i i i'm a, a lot of uh, a part of a lot of writing communities and authors and things like that so they might just be you know interested how do you create cookbook and is that a difficult process yeah um yeah i think writing a cookbook is really i think to me i would think it's the hardest book to write because it's not only writing it's not like you sit and write a story about uh, somebody or about uh, or maybe a documentary about some uh you really have to and like you know i would not put my name on something unless i am 100 percent sure more than 100 percent sure that the recipe will come out so my kitchen was my lab you know when i was writing my cookbooks i mean i mean i was in the kitchen constantly all the time and i i for sure you know a lot of the recipes that you know i just learned now let's say i didn't have any measurement i didn't have any recipe and i know exactly just like a simple idea about how this recipe is being done so i had to sometimes test and make the recipe like maybe six seven times until i perfect it so especially when it comes to baking you know like cooking sometimes you can play around with it you know add a little bit of that you can fix it but when it comes to baking, especially when I wrote my third cookbook, A Baking Journey, that was really a lot of work. It was more work than I could ever imagine. So, I, so what I did is like for three months, I will sit and choose what I'm going to uh, choose for this chapter of, you know, of the book. And then, you know, because I had like way, way, I mean, the publisher had to make me take out 100 recipes because I had like 660, I had to take six, uh, 100 out in order for the book to be reasonable, you know, to sell or to publish. So, so, I, so I had like 12 chapters. So I decide what I'm going to make for this chapter. And then once I decided to do that, I had to sit and write the recipes. And then three months, I'll be in the kitchen to to uh, test and make all these recipes. And at the same time, I have the photographer to come and take a picture once I am 100% sure this is the right you know one this is the one that i'm gonna write and it's you know it's final so it is it is a lot of work actually but you know it's to me it was so much fun i will do it again you know i mean it, it's fun if you like something and you put your mind in it uh and you are not forced to do it uh, you are not uh, you know like uh, obligated you know to do it because uh, for whatever reason, I mean, it's it's fun. It was like I was enjoying all that time. You know, it took me like uh, a year, you know, to write each each book, and uh, it was so much fun. I mean, I don't regret it at all. Yeah, and the quality of these cookbooks, I have to say, they're great quality. You know, they're a good size, so it's easy yeah. to when you open them, and as you're cooking, you can see everything very easily, and the images. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so you did a very nice job. Another way that you share your recipes is so you do have the cookbooks, but you also um, have a like a show. But it's, uh, per, you have a, your YouTube channel has so many videos. Uh, you, you know, recent. I don't know when you started this show, but when did you start um, your TV show? Um, Two thousand and ten. Okay. I started in, um, actually it was July, we started taping uh, June 2010 for MEA TV and uh, I mean like honestly they were like 10 years before that, you know, they were like asking me, you know, to do, uh, since I wrote my first cookbook, uh, they were, you know, like asking me to, you know, to do a show, they said, you know, like you, your recipes are very good and we need you to, but I wasn't ready, you know, and then like just one day I decided, I said, no, I think this would be good, you know, when my kids 
uh, were older and my daughter was, you know, it's my grandkids, you know, everyone is going to benefit from it. So I want to do it. So um, uh, me and Vanessa Demha, you know, went and we had a meeting with them. And uh, so we started taping uh, June 2010. And uh, of course, it takes about three, four weeks to montage uh, each video. Uh, so I think the first one was aired on July 10, 2010. That was my first one that we did. And then just I just kept going. I didn't want to stop. And then, of course, uh, after a few years, uh, everything was uploaded on YouTube. And then it was like, you know, easy for a lot of people instead of, you know, watching it at certain time or that, you know, on many of the young girls, you know, they'll put the laptop in front of them in the kitchen and they just follow step by step, which is which is so easy, so nice. It is. Um, and this is how I found. Um, so one day uh, I had picked a bunch of grape leaves and then I was trying to find an easy way to preserve them. Yeah. And from what I had heard is that, you know, there was that way of putting with water and salt or something like that. Mm. So for some reason I, I tried to find the easiest <laughs> ways to do things. So I was Googling stuff. I wasn't really even looking um, strictly for your recipe because I this says, I think like that you're going to make dolma, but I was yeah. to find a way to preserve them without doing it through the water, right? Yeah. So then I saw your video. I love that video because I never heard of somebody doing it the way you had, where you said you how to take them together, fold them, mm -hmm. and like yeah, yeah. just to what they did it back home. Yeah, and then you said, and you this said, is how they did it back home. You know, I remember. Yeah, and then you simplified it another way where you said you can just take them and then you put them in a Ziploc bag. And I thought, mm -hmm. you're right. Does that sound right? But I, because you have such a strong name. Yeah. <laughs> because in the past, it seemed so much more complicated. And honestly, I did. I thought, wow, how brilliant and how simple. Mm -hmm. But those right. ones, that was one of the ones I think, like I said, one of the reasons I really enjoyed it is because you brought your mom's, you know, um, I mean, you bring, you do that in other videos, but that particular one, I've never seen it. And I just loved seeing you thread the grape leaves after folding, mm -hmm. how you said that you just like hang them, you know, and yeah. I thought, oh, what a, it's, I, I would have yeah. never, I don't know that I never heard that story. And I was born in Baghdad too, even though I came young, mm -hmm. but still. Yeah. So these kind of things, I think watching you um, in your show, it's not only that we're getting the recipe, but I just feel like we're getting some a lot of traditional value and, and history that is it's just so warm. Intention. I mean, I want to keep honestly, I mean, like I always like I I always think that, you know, like I am responsible for, you know, keeping the tradition of, you know, because our food is part of our tradition mix plays a big role in our traditions, you know, like we we have food if we are sad or happy or happy occasions, big occasions, small occasions, the food plays a big role in our culture, you know, and this is very important. So I intentionally make sure, you know, I always tell stories, you know, like, you know, in like during, you know, the uh, the video, I always tell story, you know, like uh, people used to like, let's say for Kletcher, you people didn't have ovens back home. So I used to go to the bakery and put like all these and women will sit together and like five, six of them, mom, bro sisters, uh, daughters, or friends, and they work together, they tell story, they catch up. So, I mean, this is like really who we are. And I don't see any reason why we don't, you know, like acknowledge that and we don't, you know, like uh, just bring it up and, you know, for the next generation, the two or three more generations, you know, to know how we are. Because, you know, we sit and talk to our kids all the time. They are adults. They, they already have, you know, like a great idea about how we grew up, how things were done there or how culture is. But their kids would probably will not know that much. So I mean, like it will be nice, I think, to keep that. And you're passing you know, the tradition, right? You're passing mm -hmm. tradition in a digital age. That's really, but you're still passing on the stories. And so what you're doing, you're entering our kitchen as if like I, you were visiting and helping me cook. But mm -hmm. in terms of the digital age, we are just seeing you through the screen that you're doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. 
So I think it's very nice. I mean, you know, and you will be surprised like how many comments I get from people back home, you know, like people who, you know, like I have to do many of my videos in Arabic because these people don't, you know, they can't speak English, you know. So, and I do like bilingual, you know, I want to make sure everyone will benefit, you know, it's a lot of work for me, but I do it. I want to make sure everyone will benefit from it. And you will be surprised if you read the comments, if you can read Arabic, you know, like beautiful comments they write, you know, like, uh, you know, for uh, how, you know, like uh, we've been here for this long and how we are Iraqi women, but we are keeping, you know, the traditions that, you know, like even they said, even people back home don't follow anymore, you know, but we kept them and we are so proud of that. I think it's nice to give them that, a reflection of how we are, you know, like living here for over 40 years, but we kept all our traditions, you know, and they ask me questions. So do you still like do this? Do you still like get together? Do you still like family? Like they have like really uh, a different image about how we live here. You know, they, they don't think we are like 100% still Iraqi or Chaldean. I mean, like we do, we do it all the way, you know? I mean, they don't really have an idea. So I always write, you know, and tell them, you know, like respond to them and tell them, uh, no, we do this, we do that, you know, like we probably do things more than what you guys do, you know, like traditionally. Well, because when we, yeah, I've heard that a lot where I think people who left and whatever they left with, they have done their best to try to maintain it, but then the people there, they've just kind of shifted with the time. They did, yeah. And you're reminding them and inspiring them, which is really wonderful. I yeah. want to also mention that we, we've mentioned your books, but I know that you've also contributed a great deal to Mabasima. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Okay. Yeah, yeah. which was, uh, it was published by the Chaldean American Ladies of Charity. Yeah. Yes. So that's yeah, that was another fun project. Yeah, that was a project that was like, mm -hmm. a, the, uh, several women uh, that yeah. Cook and yeah, so so you've gotten involved in quite a bit of uh, work. Now, um, people to if they want to catch um, your YouTube channel is just your name, correct? Yes, yeah, it's just Samira's Kitchen. Yeah, uh, okay. you can in Samira's Arabic? Kitchen or in Arabic is uh, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> yes. But, you know, like either one will work. Yeah. Yes, and in yeah. English, then, uh, and so they they can find you your videos. And like I said, yeah. I mean. And I noticed even when I visited there that you have, um, I mean, I don't know, there was one uh, pie or something recently, but it's not all just Middle Easterners. Sometimes you do incorporate other, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I do. I do like, I, I mix it up, honestly. I mean, like, let's say it's maybe 80%, 75 to 80%, it's all like Chaldean and Middle Eastern. But like, I, you know, I mix it up, you know, sometimes I'll do like one whole Italian show. You know, I cook different kind of pasta. I do Mexican. I did Chinese even, you know. I do like uh, uh, from different, you know, Middle Eastern countries, like you know, Lebanese, uh, Moroccan, uh, like a lot, of, a lot of things that, you know, I mean, why not? We we all need to know, you know, like new recipes, you know. Sometimes you get sick and tired of right. what you have. And then you want to make sure everyone is bent. Like I have people from Saudi Arabia write for me and they say, you know, like we love Iraqi food and, you know, like you make it so easy and this is how my mom did it. I have like a Jewish, you know, girl who's like probably in her 20s and she goes, uh, my grandma, you know, like when like she, she cooked all this food for us in Israel because she was from Iraq and and she when we try me and my mom we try the recipe we watch your show all the time and we always remember our grandma because you know she this is how she cooked for us like you know when uh, the same way and the ingredients the same it tastes exactly the same so so it's nice i mean like people all over the world you know they they you know hopefully they benefit and see it and you know they follow me on instagram and facebook and because almost every day i post uh, a new or a uh, previously recorded show on Facebook, making sure according to the season. So like for month of November, I was posting all my recipes that I did for Thanksgiving. And then now starting uh, from Monday, I will be, uh, I'm starting to post all my recipes uh, for Christmas. I taped eight new shows for Christmas. Uh, well, this is why we had you on today because it's like the perfect time you're putting us in, in the mood. You yeah. know, we need to have yeah. Oh, I have amazing recipes coming like twice a week. I will be posting two recipes for Christmas and they are amazing. 
you know, I'm sure everyone will enjoy them. And I have previous ones probably over, I probably have about 100 Christmas. I love baking for Christmas. Oh, so, oh. yeah. So I'm nice. going to be watching them. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the results are going to be, but I'm going to try. I know That's that, you know, um, it's just you really bring things to life. And I, we, I, love the fact that you're keeping tradition and uh, this our stories going uh along with the rest so it's really beautiful what you do thank you so much and um one of these days you know that i'm going to be visiting samira's kitchen i guess yeah and then we'll have lunch or dinner i mean yes. this is my i know thing. that's why i'm coming <laughs> You know, people people will want to, you know, like come and pick up a book. They say, we don't want to order on Amazon. Can we, and we love like half a mile from you. Can we pick it up? Yes, please do. I love people. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they find all the tricks to get into your kitchen, huh? I don't know. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Samira. You're a beautiful Thank person. You. you put so much wonderful energy. And, you know, you give such a nice message for women who, like I said, you know, it's just the way that you handle family and work and everything like that. It's just very beautifully, very artistic. You're very artistic and that's beautiful. So thank, thank you everybody for watching. This is gonna be recorded and you can watch it anytime. And then um, please make sure to go and watch Samira's videos on her YouTube channel and on her all her social media. It's She's fun to watch. <laughs> thank you, Samira. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.